Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and go over the new Path of Exile League that's going to be coming out called Betrayal. Uh, it's coming out in 22 days, 18 hours, 55 minutes, and 16 seconds. And before I start this video, I just want to say that this, uh, this actual league is filled with so much quality of life changes that like it's it's equivalent to like four leagues put together so i'm really excited i'm gonna go ahead and play this video and let's get right on into it the ancient code of life and death is broken a devious plan of necromancy unrelenting and frighteningly efficient they call themselves the immortal syndicate They claim they are immortal. We must prove they are not. Alright, that pretty much covers that. Uh, there is developer commentary, the so we're going to listen a little bit here. Up with Jun Ortoy to bring down the Immortal Syndicate. The Syndicate has four divisions, each with its own goals. Fortification, Transportation, Research, and Intervention. In each area, you will encounter a syndicate member. Other members can show up to aid their friends or sabotage their enemies. When the battle is complete, you must decide how to continue your investigation. I had it all planned out. How could I lose? I'm better than this. Bargain, execute, interrogate, and even induce them to betray each other. Starve the beast. Will not break it. Your goal is to gain intelligence leading to the captains of each division. Raid their safe houses to pillage their supplies and uncover the ultimate identity of the Immortal Syndicate's mastermind. Each Syndicate member stores different item types in their safe house living quarters. High ranked members will have better items. Each division has a different twist on item movements. You will want to manipulate the I wonder if that's a Mjolnir. Bring certain members into positions that are going to be the most rewarding for you. Syndicate members can drop veiled items. Take these to Jun and pick one of three options for the veiled mod. In Betrayal, the old cohort of Forsaken Masters have mysteriously vanished. Together, Einhar, Alva, Nico, Jun, and Zana have taken over as the new masters. Their lead content has become the new master missions, including a simplified version of Beastry where Einhell will net beasts for you. This expansion contains many other features, such as master crafting that doesn't require grinding master levels, a unified hideout system, and new unified hideout system, and unified hideout system. God damn it. Okay, here we go. Look at how sweet this interface is for crafting now. Instead of having to go to like every single person individually, you can literally just like pull it up and you can even sort by type. 
So before when you're a master crafting, it would say the type on the affix. So it'd be like armor would be to boots, gloves, and helmet. Now it's literally you just click the type and scroll the drop down. Master crafting that doesn't require grinding master levels, a unified hideout system, and new skills. Check out pathofexile.com slash betrayal to find out more. Okay, so that's really fucking cool. Um, I'm definitely going to be playing one of the new skills in this league. Uh, we're actually going to cover some of them down here as we go. So let's go ahead and start the reading. Uh, and Path of Exile Betrayal, I don't know what that dude's name is, Jun Ortoy is investigating a mysterious organization known as the Immortal Syndicate, also known as Diablo Immortal, help her to manipulate their ranks, reveal the identities of their members, uncover their safe houses, and take down their mastermind. Uh, the Immortal Syndicate encounters have four divisions, each with its own goals, fortification, transportation, research, and invest, uh, inv wait, intervention oh okay in each area you will encounter a syndicate member uh, other members can show up there to aid their friends or sabotage your enemies that's basically what they showed in the video you can have like an escort or like a infiltration basically which is like right here uh this would be the fortification i think this is assassination i don't know what this one is Uh, manipulate the syndicate this one I'm gonna have to learn a little bit and how to do there are 18 syndicate members each with their own personalities friendships and rivalries that change as you manipulate the organizations you will need to bargain execute interrogate and even induce them to betray each other in order to further the investigation this is cool it's like a little mini game and I always have to say whenever there's something that you can kind of do in path of exile that pulls you away from mapping a little bit but still allows you to enjoy the core game it is something that's really good because players do get a little tired of you know repeating the same content so that's why new leagues are always phenomenal okay raid syndicate safe houses your goal is to gain intelligence leading to the captains of each division raid their safe houses to pillage their supplies and uncover the ultimate identity each syndicate member stores uh, different item types in their safe houses. High-ranked members will have better items. Each division has a different twist on item rewards. Manipulate the syndicate, maneuvering the certain members into positions that are going to be the most rewarding for you. I wonder if we can get that as a skill. Dude, that looks like an EK Nova totem. And these are the big chests, I see. Okay, here's this is a huge one in the game. Veiled items. Members of the Immortal Syndicate can drop items with new veiled modifiers. Take these to Jun to unveil them and pick from one of the three properties. This is huge because this is one of the first time we're getting the ability to pick one of three instead of just you click it and it's RNG and you have it. Uh, as we saw in the video before, like one of the choices was like flat armor to a chest piece after something and then there was like a like one additional curse which is really pushing the game away from a bit of the uniques and making it more around the rare items which i i personally would prefer i do like using uniques here and there but i do like upgrading from uniques and sometimes it's impossible to upgrade from a unique if it gives you something specific to your build unless like you're trying to vol like you know something ridiculous but that that is just really difficult to acquire especially in solo cell found so you basically would take this to the veiling and click it, and then it would wipe that off, and then you'd get one of the three. And then I believe either as you find the same one or do something else, you can level like up the bar, and I think the values go up when that happens. I'm not exactly sure on that, but this is this this is the way I think the new like master leveling is going to be. Instead of doing that, it has something to do with this. Uh, new masters, familiar faces. As the Immortal Syndicate ascended in power, the old cohort of Forsaken Masters mysteriously banished. In their absence, Einhar, Alva, Nico, John, and Zana have risen as a new group of masters to aid you. Their league content, introducing Delve and Incursion, has been added as core Path of Exile content. Beast Theory has been reimagined and simplified. Einhar will handle the nets as you focus on hunting the beasts. Delve is still in. Incursion is still in. And... I guess, oh, that's the beast. And there's Einhar. Damn, Einhar is mad. Do you see that? 
<laughs> He's got like a fucking crossbow. Streamlined master crafting. We have revamped the entire process of master crafting from the user interface to the way you acquire new crafting options. Individual master crafting options are now unlocked by completing specific content, such as incursion rooms or delve encounters, rather than by grinding master levels. I have to say I like that because I do get a little scared in a lot of delve encounters because I still feel sometimes delve can be like pretty overtuned in certain areas, but putting something behind it makes it feel so much better. 75 to 85 whoa dude what one transmutation for fucking 85 life that can't be right no way is that it or is this is this saying the amount that's fucking op dude <laughs> that's crazy unified hideout system hideouts favor oh wait hideouts uh, favor and decorations are now shared across all leagues. You can load and save your hideout templates and share them with other community members. I'm excited for this because there's a guy actually on YouTube. I don't know his name. I know Tarky knows him. He shouts him out all the time who does hideout templates on YouTube. I'm definitely going to take one of his. <laughs> new endgame maps. We have added four new maps to the Atlas of Worlds and one of my favorite things that's happening right now. These new maps are fleshed out versions of fan favorite tile sets from deep in Delve's Azurite Mine. The entire Atlas of Worlds has been rearranged. So that basically means map tiers are shuffled, maps, map orders are completely changed, and four additional maps are in. So there's Fungal Hollow and Primordial Blocks. These are just Courthouse and Channel are the same. They just have been changed in tier. New and revamped skills. So this is the main one for me that I'm really excited for. Let me just scroll down. Oh, we're basically done here. So, alongside other balance improvements, Betrayal introduces 10 new or revamped skills across three core character archetypes. These include several completely new types of skills, such as brands and banners. This is something I have to play with, for sure. So, let's pull up all six of them. So, skill reworks. We're making changes to Ice Spear. I actually never looked at the Ice Spear rework change a while ago. Vortex, Ice Nova, Arctic Breath, Tectonic Slam. I like how three of these, four of these skills are actually ice related, which is really cool. Vortex is a skill I really want to play, but I felt like the AoE was just, and it was so difficult to scale between like, if you go crit, then the damage over time sucks, and then it doesn't feel right because you're missing a component of the skill. Um, increasing their power and adding new interesting behavior. That's another thing that's really, that's really cool to see is instead of just flat out damage buff, it's actually adding interesting new behavior. Um, which seems like it's not going to be locked behind Threshold Jewels, but who knows. Banners. Cast a banner once to carry it, weakening enemies around you while buffing the attacks of you and your allies. War banner gains stages as you kill enemies, while Dread banner gains stages as you impale. Cast a second time to place the banner, making the effect larger and more powerful. So I don't know if this means that everyone wears a banner, and you just drop it at the boss for like the bonus, or if only supports wear the banner, and that's their goal. I don't fully understand exactly how that works um brands so this is this is what i want to see create a brand on the ground that attaches to an enemy that walks near it storm brand zaps nearby enemies that deals damage in an area around them while armageddon brand summons destructive flaming meteors branded enemies drop the brand on death letting it jump to other enemies I don't know what it like is this kind of like a trap or is this just like a skill that you would precast i guess it's going to be difficult to know until we have um like an actual uh skill gem to look at as reference i know that this guy is playing crit because he's got power charges and i think this is the brand unless it's completely reversed definitely seems like a, a cool like a cool uh introduction though of like a new skill type I'm just thinking because of like the way it works, it says it deals damage in an area around the target. So that's really good. Think of things like beyond, right? You kill a target, mob spawn, and then it just smacks them. I like that a lot. Shattering Steel. So I don't play melee skills much, but these look interesting. Shattering Steel is a sword and axe attack that releases a cluster of metal blades that burst on impact in an outward cone of damage. Enemies can hit by multiple projectiles or burst. Shattering Steel has a chance to impale 
a new effect that stores some physical damage taken by the enemy and deals it again when hit. So hold on. Shattering Steel has a chance to impale, an effect that stores some physical damage taken by the enemy. I don't know if that means you store the physical damage taken by the enemy, and then when you get hit, you release it, or if it, like, stacks on the monster. I'm, I don't know exactly. Again, I, I gotta, like, see it. I'm more, like, of a visual person. And then Lancing Steel, which this one looks, this one looks really cool. Um, this is a skill for sure I want to play. Lancing Steel is a sword and axe attack that releases an impaling projectile and summons metal blades that are fired forward in rapid succession. Enemies can be hit by multiple blades, though only the central projectile applies the new impale effect. So we have impale and we have, okay, that's the same one. That's right, impale. And then one of the banners even says, which one is it here? Dread banner gains stages as you impale enemies. I guess maybe it's not for support because it says as you impale enemies. So maybe it's just more for like melee. I wonder if they'd lock it so you can either use Warchief Totem or Banner. That would be pretty cool. Uh, and then there's Winter Orb. This skill, I'm pretty sure is going to be crazy overplayed. And this skill looks like the most awesome skill so far, in my opinion, that I want to make a build around. There is a 100% chance that I'm making a build around Winter Orb. So far as it seems, Winter Orb is in number one. Lancing Steel might be in... Well, no, Brand is probably... I don't know, even Brand might be number one. Winter Orb and Brands, and then there's the Lancing Steel. I don't really play much melee builds, but I really like Lance style things. It's just something I've always enjoyed. Uh, like in a lot of games I've played, I like playing like Dragoons and things like that. Just and Actually, I don't even know if Dragoons are specifically with a Lance, but I really like Lances and Pole Arms. Stat staves don't count in PoE though because there's no like thrusting. <clears throat> okay, powerful new items. Many of the 15 new unique, uh, that's actually quite a bit, new unique items in Betrayal have veiled mods allowing you to customize the item more than ever before. Betrayal also includes five new divination cards designed by our supporters. So there is a new bow here, the Crimson Storm Steelwood Bow. Uh, specifically damage against bleeding targets. You gain increased flash charges, chance to maim on crit. That's like the Assassin Ascendancy. And then adds flat fizz against bleed. And you get an extra modifier. I don't know how these modifiers work. I don't know if they like roll a value because I think they do roll like a value numeric in there and then you pick one of the three. But I don't know if it's always the same three or if you're picking from like a large pool because unique specifically have like set things right so i don't know how that's gonna work um then we have this one here this is an interesting ring too plus five to socketed aura gem socketed gems have increased mana reservation all attributes increased life regen for each uncorrupted item equipped minus two total mana cost of skills for each corrupted item equipped and then this one is awesome temp chains is my favorite curse so if you know anything about me this is a fucking awesome piece 15 all attributes, 21% increased damage, flat life, mono regen per second, temporal chains has 100% reduced mono reservation, and chance to gain shaper's presence for 10 seconds when you kill a rare or unique enemy. And then there are these supporter packs, which actually look really fucking cool. So there is the Master Undertaker, and then the one I think looks cooler, which is the Master Soul Stealer. I'm not going to go over the portals right now. So this is the Soul... This is the Undertaker. I think these hands look so cool, though. And I like the cloak, too. It reminds me of the Scholar set, I think, like this back part. I think that the weapon skin looks really good with daggers, and I, I just really like this armor set, to be honest. I don't care too much for the color purple, but I really, I mean, actually purple's my favorite color, but I just don't like the um, the color scheme, I guess, matching it as much as this one here. This one, I don't like the helmet, but I really like how it looks. Also, Stargate Atlantis, anyone?
The weapon trail looks so fucking sick on this weapon, dude. Look at it! It's beautiful! Anyway, that's pretty much gonna cover everything from the Path of Exile update. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think or, you know, tell me which one you prefer between the Betrayal and or was it Betrayal and Soul Stealer? I forgot which ones, which, which, what they're called. Um, and also let me know which one of the new skills are your favorite types. Um, I'm going to see you guys all later. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I won't really be playing too much POE content until this actual update. Um, so I know you guys have been watching. I've been playing Black Desert. I've kind of stopped a bit of Black Desert. So it's probably just going to be Warcraft 3 and then maybe some random games until then. I may be checking out Guild Wars 2 for like a week. Um, but I don't know. I'm not really sure yet. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. I don't know if you guys saw or not, but I also took out... It's kind of dark. I took out all of my dreads. So, I don't have dreads anymore. I went back to my old hairstyle. Anyway, have a good one, everybody.